Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. We've got another exciting update about the ICOM IC705. ICOM recently released some new technical specifications on the IC705, so we're going to take a look at those. Now last month, ICOM also updated the release date because of the ongoing pandemic. That's been updated again for May. So there's a lot to cover, but if you stick with me, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Now, if you're new to the channel or just hearing about the ICOM IC705 for the first time, the IC705 is an all-in-one, all-inclusive, everything-in-one-box QRP to 10-watt radio for portable communications. To alleviate the normal wire mess with cat control and operating data modes, it's got a one-wire interface. It can power itself using ICOM's lithium-ion battery packs from its HTs. It can also recharge that internal battery off-grid or power itself with an external supply. The IC705 also charges itself while it's connected to your computer for cat control or data modes. It's got the legendary IC7300 user interface and many other capabilities and functionalities that we as portable radio operators find useful. Now, I don't want to just keep listing functionalities and capabilities because I know every operator has their own unique requirements. Instead, I'll leave my ICOM IC705 playlist in the description so you can find out more about it. So. The first of the big updates is the IC705 availability. It looks like it's going to start shipping in June for Japan. The IC705 will then make its way to other regions around the world, but the rollout in those regions is dependent upon type acceptance. ICOM suggests we get in touch with our local distributors to find out about availability in our unique regions. I understand it sounds a bit like a canned response, but I suppose that's the best they can give us given the current circumstances around the world. Now really what I've been waiting for are more detailed technical specifications about this radio. Specifications which would actually validate my initial excitement about the IC705. So let's go through what I believe are the most important technical specs for the off-grid portable radio operator. First on my list and very important to the off-grid field radio operator is the ability to power and charge this radio off-grid and in the field. Now we already know about those popular radios on the market which actually can't be charged in the field or charged very slowly in the field. I recently wrote a blog post about portable power and field communications. The post goes on to talk about manufacturers not giving us radios with a reasonable runtime or the ability to quickly recharge or power them in the field. Well, the IC705 solves this problem for us. So far, it looks like we're going to get about three hours runtime from the internal battery. This might not seem like a lot, but having the possibility to power and charge externally will dramatically extend that runtime. As you probably guessed it, I'll be powering my IC705 with the PowerFilm Lightsaber Max. The Lightsaber Max has 12 volt and USB outputs, but any solar panel with a USB output can be used to recharge the IC705 in the field. And as far as I know, there is no other portable HF radio on the market with the ability to be USB charged in the field. Now it's time to start talking about current consumption of this radio. Now when we first saw the color touchscreen display on the IC705, many operators were understandably concerned about the amount of current consumption from that display. Well, ICOM has finally released the initial current consumption tests for the IC705. At 13.8 volts using external supply, we have 320 milliamps. At 7.4 volts using the internal battery, we have 700 milliamps. On received standby, the current draw is 260 milliamps at 13.8 volts, and received standby current at 7.4 volts is 400 milliamps. Being completely honest, the current consumption is a lot less than I thought it would be 
with that large touchscreen color display. Now, even at 65 degrees north, it's pretty simple to generate 700 milliamps of current through a lightweight portable solar panel. Even so, if the current consumption was any higher, I would call it a red flag. Considering all the capabilities and functionalities this radio has built in, I think ICOM has done a pretty good job on current consumption. Even so, as soon as the 705 arrives, we're going to get it out in the field, get it off grid, and really see what it's capable of. The ICOM IC705 has a built-in GPS for what I imagine is location sharing over D-Star networks. The internal GPS is also responsible for keeping the internal clock of the radio synchronized. Now, if the ICOM IC705's internal GPS works the way I think it will, the internal GPS can be used to keep our computer or Raspberry Pi's internal clock synchronized and up to date. This is one of those special off-grid features we don't think about until we're actually off-grid and in the field. Now, here at 65 degrees north, just like other places around the world, we suffer from an extreme range of temperatures. So our radio equipment must also be compatible with operations in an extreme temperature range. Here at 65 degrees north, that usually means the cold. Most amateur radio equipment on the market is specced for zero degrees or around freezing, with no expectation of proper operation below freezing. To combat this, we usually use shelters, operate with wood fires or stoves, things like that. The IC705 has been specced for operation in temperatures as low as minus 10 Celsius. That's about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. On the flip side of that scale, the IC705 is also perfectly comfortable operating up to about 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. From where I'm standing, it looks like the IC705 has been well engineered and is a lot more than simply eye candy. Now, I didn't talk about any of the magnificent features the IC705 shares with the IC9700 or the IC7300. And I didn't do so because I wanted to focus on the portability, or quite simply, the features which are important to the field radio operator. Now, there definitely are other portable radios on the market these days. At least at the moment, I don't think there's any American or Japanese manufacturer who's specifically targeting the off-grid field radio operator. And once they see what the IC705 can do, I wouldn't be surprised if companies like Elecraft and Yezu actually step up and upgrade their radios. The IC705 is designed to give you all the features and capabilities of your base station radio while you're out in the field. Now, I understand most of the haters are hating in good fun. So I'll leave the comments completely open. Give me your honest opinion, whether you like it, whether you dislike it, and tell me what you think about the ICOM IC705. Just remember, I'm approaching the IC705 from the field radio perspective. I want to take it out in the field. I want to stay out in the field for extended periods. And I don't have to worry about how I'm going to charge it or carrying extra battery packs or anything like that. Even more, I don't have to attach a bunch of different cables, wires, or boxes on the outside of this radio just to operate the way I want to operate. All right, guys, the floor is yours. Let me know what you think in the comments. The only thing I ask from you is that you be polite. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.